Hi, Clutter Fairy fans. Welcome to the Clutter Fairy Weekly for May 4th, 2021. I'm your co-host, Ed Gumnick, and I'm speaking with Gail Goddard, professional organizer and owner of the Clutter Fairy in Houston, Texas. Hi, everybody. The Clutter Fairy Weekly is our weekly webcast and podcast where we talk about all things organizing. And we use all of your lovely comments on our social media channels to drive our topics. And we appreciate that you do that. Thanks so much. If you're joining us in the Zoom meeting for the first time, you can share your comments and questions via the chat, and I'll try to make sure Gail gets to them before we move on to another topic. You can also use the raise hand feature to let me know when you'd like to ask a question or make a comment yourself via audio or video. And during, the, we're streaming the webcast live on Facebook, <clears throat> so you can also share your questions and comments there, and I'll relay them to Gail. And during the webcast every Tuesday, you can also talk to us by phone by calling 669-900-6833. Use meeting ID 993-419-863 and password clutter to join the meeting. Let's start today by talking about last week's tittle. Last week's assignment was called Get Everybody on Board. We suggested that you engage another member of your family or household in a decluttering task or project. We want to hear from our participants in Zoom and on Facebook who asked for the help of a family member or a roommate in a project this week. How did Please, it go? How did it go? Please <laughs> let us know. Oh, oh, um, Anya says, I got my husband on board, so you're going to have to fill us in with that. Yeah, definitely. Um, for myself, I didn't ask for Jaime's help in any organizing tasks because he's the one who's been really spearheading the project of getting the new house in order but he needed some of mine and after the the after i finished the webcast last week i went looking for jaime and rich my brother-in-law and couldn't find them anywhere and i went outside and found a gigantic media cabinet standing in our driveway <laughs> and then i texted to ask where they were and he said on our way back and they, they showed up a few minutes later with my sister and a second media cabinet. And then the four of us wrestled these two giant pieces of furniture into the house. And then over the next couple of days, cleaned them up and reassembled them. They were so heavy, they had to take all the drawers and doors out and off. Ooh. Yeah. And then we put them where they're going and reassembled them. But they solved a tremendous number of problems they'll let us get put a lot of things out of sight in our guest bedroom and you know a guest bedroom doesn't have to there doesn't have to be room for a guest to dance there just has to be room in. for them to sleep <laughs> and store their clothes and so that all all of our uh, all of our goals in that room are are now being met so Yay. agatha said i wrote him a list for him to do in his own time uh, Connie said, asked dear husband what bothered him most. He said his own desk and he started cleaning it is about halfway done. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Just because you asked him the question. That's interesting. Uh, Rowan sh shared a link to the Clutterbug test that we talked about last week in the chat. And I noticed that, that we did not, I think we put the link with the YouTube video last week, but we, we, don't appear to have pasted it into the show notes, so I'll, oh, okay. I'll fix that. Okay. Kara Anya's, said, oh, go ahead. Anya says, we decluttered and organized our garden shed and also moved my filing cabinets around so that I'm able to sell two of the three. He already had helped me decluttering or rather emptying. Yay. Yay. That's good. Excellent. And Kara says, my sister-in-law from Chicago was here last weekend. I have helped her declutter a storage area in her home, and she offered to help me go through some of the memorabilia and papers from my parents in my office. So good to have someone else helping. No kidding. Cause then there, it was somebody there that also knew some of the people in the photos. And I'm sure that that was really helpful in deciding what was most important and what wasn't. That's awesome. You guys did great. Excellent. Okay. Let's get on to, we have a lot to talk about. So we, we're going to get straight to our main event now. Today's topic, which we are calling Bags, Baskets, and Bins, Favorite Organizing Tools and Materials, 
was inspired by a discussion in the chat during a previous webcast. We were talking that day about organizing the home office and lots of participants asked for or made recommendations about products to use. Petra, who's a frequent participant, mentioned IKEA's Fiala. Can never I say to, that. Uh, <laughs> I think that's Fiala, maybe Fiala, a nifty three-level organizer with a handle that makes it easy to clear your desktop in one quick grab. Bernadette spoke in favor of clear file boxes as a personal favorite. Love those things. And Deborah shared that she manages manages her to did list. <laughs> to did in quotation marks there with right. sticky notes and washi tape on a door. I wasn't familiar with washi tape, but it is a super cool. It's um, it's actually Japanese tape made from beautiful papers. And, and used as a crafty object in all kinds of paper crafts and yeah, uh, but it's been adapted into um, like bullet journaling where you're creating your own um, your your own to do list and project management and all kinds of you know decorate and create a calendar page and anybody that's making their own crafty stuff is seen and heard of washi tape because they're using it as decoration for all kinds of things. So we get lots and lots of questions about which products to use and how to put them to work in decluttering. And there are a million products out there. So today, Gail is going to share a few thoughts on selecting materials and tools, plus some of her current favorites. Yes, I am. And the first thing I'm going to say is that the universe of organizing solutions available can be completely overwhelming because it is an industry in and of itself, uh, hence the container store. The container store could not exist if there weren't a million people trying to find organizing solutions and products out there. And, and you can Google the word organizing product and you could go down a deep dive, and never come out of the internet and still be trying to look at all the products that are available. They sell organizing products that have an interest in solving your stuff problem with more stuff. They're always trying to get you to buy something else to solve a problem. And for some people, that's the first step that they take. And it's the step that aggravates their clutter issues. If you're not planning and choosing very carefully, then you go and buy a bunch of products because they look cool and you bring them home and then they're just a problem. And so I often go, I started out thinking I was going to have to buy products for people all the time on my jobs. But most of the time, I go in and use the products that they've already got because they never used them properly or they bought them and never installed them or they didn't know what to do with them when they got them home. And so I hardly ever have to send people out to buy fresh products because they've usually already got enough that I can make it work with what they've got. Um, so it's just a, it's another way to add clutter. And anybody that's selling those products, their job is to make you think that this is the end all be all solution. And they're just trying to sell you more things, which I get and which, you know, we want the products out there, but I, I want people to be more judicious in their choices and think through what they actually need and what will be useful for them before they try to go buy products. And this is why when I speak to groups about the most common organizing mistakes, the very first one that I lead off with is a warning Buying or organizing products is not the first step to getting organized. It's just another way to add to the clutter. So a very, a few carefully selected organizing products can make a world of difference in your space, um, but it's something that you need to do after you declutter, after you've thinned the herd, after you've sorted everything out and you have a good handle of how much stuff you have, how much stuff of each type you have, where you want to be able to use the stuff that you have and knowing those, the answers to those questions then informs the organizing product that you choose to store or contain or make use of the stuff. And so you have to sort of get through several organizing steps before you get down to the buying the product part. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you look beyond the container store displays and the organizing aisles at your favorite discount stores, you may also find some unconventional and creative solutions to your clutter challenges. So we race off to the organizing aisle at Target, Home Depot, Lowe's, and, and of course the container store. 
and look at all of the great displays of all the great things that they have. But maybe that those solutions are out of your budget or it's not, you don't want to try the most expensive one first. You want to try an example that's less expensive or might be just as good that doesn't involve such a significant investment because let's face it, going to the container store is expensive. Their solutions are fabulous and beautiful and they cost a lot of money. So there's always an alternative that might be a little more unconventional that might not be as expensive. So you want to think about how badly you need this product <laughs> and what you need it to do. And then just be a little uh, investigative about where you, how you solve that problem, where you source that solution, because it might not be in the obvious places and you might find something cool. And so we're going to talk about today about the usual suspects, the things that I find to be reliable and versatile go-to products. I use a lot in my work with clients and that's where we're going to start. And then we'll talk about some of the unconventional ones after that. So here's the first one up. This is a picture of an iDesign Linus shallow drawer organizer. And these are my favorite small bins because they're really only like two inches tall. And one end, the smallest version is a two by three square. So I can use these in every small space. My favorite place to use them is in a medicine cabinet. All those little bits and chapsticks and nail clippers and pots and bobby pins all over the place can sit in a little bin like this and be manageable. But they work in any small or shallow drawer to hold makeup and brushes in the bathroom, or they can hold pins and paper clips in a desk drawer or peelers and garlic presses in a shallow kitchen drawer. These are not attached to each other. They're separate little um, narrow boxes and they have great little rubber stopper feet on the bottom of them so that they don't slip around as much in the drawers. And depending on the surface of the drawers, they, they might still slip a little bit, but mostly they stay in place as you open and close drawers. Now, and they're easy Gail to grab and use. Do they have a is it do they have a plain clear bottom? It, are, is are these on top of a like a shelf liner, a drawer liner? No, no, no. Actually, this particular brand they have um, a cord, lines. A little, in, yeah, it's okay. like a little textured bottom, okay, which helps with gripping. And so yeah. on the inside of that box is some um, some lines, but they're it's very useful. And because they're not connected to each other you can configure the layout with the various sizes and shapes to fit any drawer. So it's not like you buy one and it's got, it's one unit with all these holes in it and you have to make that unit fit in the space. You can buy these little bitty things in various sizes and sit them and configure them to what, however wide or deep your drawer is and it's fine. And they really work everywhere. Like think of an office desk drawer that's super shallow nothing you ever put in there will work because it's always too tall. So these two inch high things are often um, small enough that they can fit in even a very shallow desk drawer. Tammy asked for a link and, and we will, um, I'll include some links in the show notes. This particular one, these you linked from container store, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, yeah, these are out of container store. Um, I see another real benefit to these, which is, in the kitchen, you know, you, sometimes you're, you open a drawer and something falls off the counter into the drawer. You get d crumbs or, or crud papers, little bits of paper towel or whatever. And the advantage here is you could take out the one that the stuff fell into and clean it. Whereas the multi-compartment drawer liner. Yeah, the one, this, this solid unit. You have to just sort of manage, you know, wipe, try and wipe out the single thing or just give up and take everything out and clean the whole thing. Yeah. So that's, these are kind of convenient for cleaning, I would think. Yeah, they're really great. And I use them all over everywhere where it's a shallow drawer in any capacity all over the house. But basically, it lets you segment and sort all kinds of things. I use them in a junk drawer. I would use them in anything that's that's little and shallow and for some reason they make a lot of shallow drawers in the kitchen and I guess that's because they're thinking of all the you know kitchen tools that end up being laid flat and you don't want to take a whole bunch of a big tall drawer with a layer of stuff that's shallow and so these drawer, these drawer organizers are really great for that okay let's go to the next one 
This is also a I Design Linus style. And these are the pantry bins. So this is my favorite shape of corralling bin for almost anything that is hand carry size. If you think of all the products in your house and uh, food, cleaning, personal care products, these are all things that are basically things you grab with your hand, right? So I think of them as hand carry size. These are great mid-size containers that fit in most cabinets or pantries or bathroom cabinets. They can hold various sizes of food products, personal care products, office supplies, crafty products. They're also clear. They're easy to grab and move around because of the handle hole, because they have that punch out hole where you can reach in and grab and pull. Um, and they and the various sizes are all six inches high. This particular drawer organizer is six inches high. So they hold most bottles, jars, cans, boxes of anything either edible or wearable, so, or cleanable. So all of those things can stand up inside a six inch box without, even if they tip over in the box, they will not tip over and fall out. Where if you use a drawer that's only two inches high or three inches high, something really tall, it gets disturbed, would fall all the way out of the box. But with this six inch high wall, then no matter what happens inside the box, even if it falls over in the box, it's not gonna tumble out of the box most of the time. So these uh, pantry bins work in all kinds of spaces and I put them inside, not just in the pantry. I would use them in the fridge. I would use them in, on a counter. I would use them in a kitchen cabinet, in a bathroom cabinet, in a linen closet, in on the shelf, bookshelf in your office, <laughs> on the shelf in your craft room. Um, these are great bins and th they are clear so you can always see what's going on. You can put a label on them if you want to be able to label, oh, this is a, this is all the glues and you want a label that says glue on it. There's a million ways to label them. And so really great, versatile, useful bins. Our new house has a freezer that has big, deep drawers and those, these would work for sit inside you the know, drawer. Like stick all the bagged frozen stuff in in a in one of these which right? would be kind of kind of handy and you know those stupid bags that have that are all floppy and have no shape yeah. right you can sort of stand them up inside the bin and it helps control those bags a little bit so that they're not just falling and sliding all over the surface and getting in the way of something else and somebody asked would they crack what does that say would they crack? frozen if frozen. I don't, I don't think so. Mm -mm. Most I don't think so. Most modern plastics are good down to, you know, well below freezer temperature. Right. Exactly. So this is a great way to corral. Um, you know, six inches tall will fit under the bathroom sink where there's plumbing in the way. Those little boxes will usually fit around part of the way. Um, and they'll fit in most kitchen cabinets that are, you know, the, the space between the shelves is 12 inches and one of these will fit in there. Um, they're great in pantries, like I said, very, very versatile and useful. Okay. All right, next one. This is a Slice brand auto retractable box cutter and it's the best, the best box cutter ever. And I found out about this at a NAFO conference. Um, another organizer did a class on um, organizing, um, you know, tools that an organizer would use on a job. And this was one of hers. And I Im immediately came home and bought one because it's the coolest thing ever. <coughs> it has a ceramic blade. So it's more finger friendly. It's not as easy to cut yourself with it. And it is also, it rests in a retracted position. So the blade doesn't stay out. It doesn't like a regular box cutter, you slide it out and then the blade is out and you have to slide it back to make it retract. But this is designed so that it sits in a retracted position and I have to push the blade out while I'm cutting in order to cut through a box, for instance, to open a box. And so it's a really great from that standpoint. As soon as I let it go, the blade retracts. And that means no one accidentally cuts themselves because if I drop it, I've let it go and the blade is hiding before it hits anything like my foot. <laughs> so <laughs> if you um, find carrying around box cutters nerve wracking, 
because you're worried about what are you going to accidentally cut? What are you going to, you're going to cut your leg. You're going to cut your clothes. You're going to cut the wall. You're going to stick it into a, you know, you're worried about it all the time. Right. And so, and you are always like, Oh, I have to remember to pull it back when I'm through with this one. You don't have to, you have to push the blade out to use it. And so all of that worry about who's going to get hurt with my box cutter, or am I going to hurt myself is immediately gone. And I've been using it for a long time and, um, you know, you can trade out the blades, but it, and this particular one has storage for an extra blade in the handle. Um, I've been using it for a long time and the ceramic blade continues to cut through the tape, the various tapes on boxes without any trouble at all. It's been brilliant. I love it, love it, love it. Lorraine asked where you get it and we have a link for it. We have an Amazon link for it on the website. I'm going to find that so we can uh well and i just uh, they have a website sliceproducts.com s-l-i-c-e products.com and it's on their website they sell other things too but this is the one that makes me happy the most <laughs> excellent okay next is ikea's iconic blue shopping bags these bags are made out of this fabulous tarp-like material. They're basically indestructible. I've occasionally seen one with some rips in them, but you can tell that they've been used a million times before they start to tear. I can carry tons of donations in one and because of its size and shape, the weight doesn't really matter. It never rips through. It never, the handles don't tear off. Like when you use paper bags or reusable bags, depending on what they're made out of, sometimes the weight of something that you're carrying rips the bag apart. Well, these things, they don't rip. That's the bottom line. The bag can carry whatever I can lift myself. I have filled those things up and just barely been able to pick them up. Sometimes <laughs> I've overstuffed them. I use the large shopping bag most of the time, but I also use the medium one. So they have a half size one. And I use that one to carry books or magazines because of course books and magazines are really heavy to carry. You can't make this large bag full of books or nobody can pick it up. Um, so I use the medium one for the other kind. And they also make a large one that actually is a box. It's like, and it's got a zipper. So it, it sort of looks like a carry all backpackish kind of thing. And I use that one with the zipper on it and that stays in my car all the time. And I, and I put empty bags that I'm going to use for donations in the zippered bag. So basically, IKEA is my mechanism for IKEA's bags are my mechanism for carrying donations out of people's houses, getting them in the car, taking them to the, to the donation places. And I just hand them over and say, Can I have the empty bag back? And they go in there and take the stuff out of the bag and then bring me the bag back. And I've got a bag that I can reuse a million times. It, it's, great way to manage making, if you're doing a big decluttering project and you know you're gonna be making a million trips to the donation place, a couple of these bags will prevent you from having the donations rip out the bag. And it, it you know, you can fill it as much as you're able to carry if you can't fill the whole thing fine. But otherwise, you know, you can put three pillows in it and carry the pillows away. So it's really useful for making product move in and out of your house. Penny uses them occasionally when she's doing groceries and she'll put things, grocery things into that bag and then bring that bag in the house because it's easier to carry that. There's a short handle. You can see there's a little short handle and also a long handle. So you can either use the short handles in your hand or you can use the long handles over your shoulder. So it's really a great bag and I use it every day in my business you will find them helpful too. And the, <laughs> the, the big ones are 99 cents. Like it's, they don't, I'm sure they're not making money on them. They're just, they sell them, they use them and they make them available. And that's awesome. Okay. This is the container stores, medium size mallet. I call this my girl mallet. It's specially designed as a smaller diameter mallet in, for building alpha shelving because you need to be able to get in and around to build the shelving stuff. But I find it a perfect side, size for whacking all kinds of things that I need to take apart or put together. It's lighter weight and has a smaller mallet head so it's easier for me to maneuver. And the mallet head doesn't mark anything because the yellow ends that you can see, that's actually uh, rubber. You know, it's clear rubberish stuff. So it doesn't mark anything when I'm banging the hell out of something. I'm not putting chips in it or putting marks on it. 
I can build Elvis shelves. I can take them apart. I can move cabinet shelves around or build other shelving units or just break stuff up. It works much better for me than the standard mallet from the tool section at the home improvement store. And I just love this thing. And I have used it a million times slowly over time because the rubber on the ends is soft. After you beat a whole bunch of things with it over a long period of time, it might start to get rough or be a little torn or whatever, but it still will wax shelves. So you don't have to worry about it. And the big heavy ones that are you get from the home improvement store, they're always gray, the mallet head. And when you hit things, it leaves gray marks behind a lot of times. And this one, you have no problem with that at all. So um, particularly for somebody who is not super strong, you know, those big handled mallets are designed for stronger people. This is easy for somebody who is uh, less strong and more lightweight to grab and use. And it will still, I can still whack the hell out of an Elva shelf and make things separate. So <laughs> it works really, really great. Leela asked whether she's ever used that mallet on me. And the, <laughs> the answer is no, I am usually uh, susceptible to milder forms of persuasion. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's awesome. <laughs> okay. Okay. So now let's talk about some less conventional solutions. Uh, these are materials that I like to use in ways that go far beyond the task for which they're designed, like over the door shoe organizers. And the truth is, I hardly ever use these for shoes. Most people who have clutter issues won't use them for shoes because then when they take the shoes off, then they have to work at getting them back up and into the pockets. And somehow that process of, I take the shoes off, I bend over, I pick them up, I stick them in the little rack, that stops most people, except those who are really pretty organized already. They work great if you're organized and you're willing to do the steps of taking the shoes off and then put them away. But if you're not, if that's, if those extra steps are a barrier to entry for you, then these organizers don't really help but I like to use them for all kinds of things besides shoes because they do work very well as visual storage in tight spaces for other things like cleaning products in a utility room or craft materials in a craft space or office supplies in a home office or cables and tech gadgets for someone with a lot of tech. Mark, our friend Mark, who's a tech guy, and he um, makes his living as an IT guy. He has all kinds of gadgets and cables and adapters and folder all related to tech. And we hung one of these up for him and he has the whole thing full with all kinds of tech stuff in it. And it works really well for him because he likes being able to see through the, you can see through all the pockets, you can tell exactly what's hanging there and it makes it easy to find stuff. Um, my friend Sandy uses one for all of her BD uh, UFOs. So she stores the unfinished objects, that's what UFOs is, in a Ziploc bags. And then these bags go in the shoe organizer and she has it hanging on the outside of a closet door in the room where she works. And so she can see exactly what she has and what isn't finished and she can pull out a new project anytime she wants. She's also pulled some and decided they weren't gonna get done and torn the project apart. But it's a, it's a dedicated space for her to store all UFOs. And so any project she starts and doesn't finish can be put away and hung in the pocket and refound again whenever she's ready to work on it. These things are super versatile and helpful. They're easy to install and uninstall. And any door that you can find that you can hang these onto a back of, they will solve a whole lot of problems for you in a really, um, uh, in a really visually uh, easy to see way and also taking up a little bit of space instead of a lot of space. They're very helpful. Um, Randy says, I use shoe organizers for gloves and tech. Connie says, I use one inside my wardrobe door to organize small clothing items and sundries. Kay Romero said, someone recommended using them for baby clothes. His wife rolls up the baby's Ooh. outfits in there and he can pull out the outfit and dress the baby. Isn't that a great idea? Because baby clothes are so tiny. That's a great idea. I haven't had to do that before, and but I love it. Tammy mentioned using them for small, for, for first aid items and small lotions. There you go. See, the pockets are, you know, they're like, you can see that spray bottle in there. You can, they're, 
they're usually pleated and they, so they expand a little bit and they can hold one sort of hand carry size object. And so they work really well for a lot of stuff. Okay, so the next thing is packing cubes. So these are designed for use in a piece of luggage to containerize your clothes, containerize your clothes. And I think they work great that way. You know, you can subdivide your stuff and then they don't get in a big mess in the luggage. And some people like to just take these cubes out and put them straight into wherever they're unpacking. But I also think that they're a great solution in a big drawer in a piece of furniture. So a lot of older furniture has, you know, two drawers that pull out and they're really wide and they're really tall and they're basically just a cavern. When you open them up, they're just a cavernous drawer and you put things in there and it all floats around in there and it's really easy for the stuff to get scrambleized. But these cubes are a great way to group like with like, put those items together, and then you can throw that cube into a drawer and however many of those cubes are in the drawer, it really doesn't matter. You can move them all around if they stack together, great, but if they get in a jumble, they're not, it's not completely a jumble because each of the little, uh, little packets is still a zipped closed thing. And so you can put tech gadgets with their cables or you can, and instructions, or you can put part, little parts of a vacuum in one, or you can put all your swimming gear in one. It's, it's a great way to subdivide contents of a large cavernous drawer. And it's clearly they were designed for luggage. That's great. But it's just like having a really more durable, bigger Ziploc bag. <laughs> and so, and then, and it, and it has, you know, a little bit of structure in terms of sidewalls and things. And so you can still stack them. Um, loose Ziploc bags with stuff in them don't always stack very well. Sometimes you have to rack them up in a container standing up to make that be useful. But these don't require an external holder, you can just put them in and stand them up or, or uh, stack them up or whatever. And th they make good use of a really large cavernous thing that it, lots of older furniture provide you this big open here. What am I gonna do with this big grand space? This is a way to solve that problem. Emily Sue mentions, I would wanna use it just to make my closet look more tidy. And that's a good, that's a good point. You know, sometimes all the all your stuff fits in the space you have allocated for it, but even organized, it looks like a mess. Right. And so these let you sort of get it down to a more minimal number of things to look at for yeah. for people who for people who need a simpler environment and a, you know less less visual stimulation. That's it. It's it's it makes the look uniform. What you see is the uniform edge of the containers instead of the changing contents of the containers and it makes it less visually distracting right yeah it's good okay um next is under the shelf baskets uh, so most people think of these at for kitchen cabinet use but they can increase vertical storage in any anchored shelves on a bookcase or bookshelves in office cabinets and shelving and in the closet. So you just have to buy one that has the shelf clip part, the part that actually clips over the shelf. You have to buy one that fits over your actual shelf height. So some of them are narrower than others. So be careful that you know the thickness of your shelf before you buy these. Not all are created equal. And if the bend of the clip is too narrow to go on your shelf and you try to shove it on, then it just won't it'll just sort of stretch out of shape and not hang correctly and it won't work. So you just need to know how tall your actual shelf is and then find an under the under basket, under shelf basket with the clip wide enough. But basically if you have anchored shelves that can't be moved around, so you can't change the space between the shelves and the stuff that you wanna put on them is not as tall as the shelf, then you can put an under basket and, and in essence create a mini extra shelf under there and make use of all the vertical space in your shelf. So this is a good way to cope with not all bookcases, all built-in cabinets, all shelving units have the ability to be for the shelves to be moved up and down. And so this is one of the ways that you cope with that. Next is extra large collapsible storage baskets. 
And I just mean that they're soft-sided, so they'll bend if they get stepped on or tripped over. I like a version of tall, open basket that isn't rigid, but still can stand up by itself, even when it's overfilled a little bit. Um, you've seen some sort of pop-up laundry baskets that are really meshed with a wire. And if you overfill those baskets, they sort of topple over. So I'm really talking about something that is, this one in particular has a little bit more um, ability to flex, but it's sturdy enough, it's dense enough material that it can sort of stand up on its own, even if it's filled to the top and a little top heavy. So <clears throat> it looks good in a kid's room with a million sub toys in it, and or it looks good in the living room with extra blankets and pillows. Of course, it can be a laundry hamper too, which is what it's originally designed for, but I like to use it for oversized soft items that are easily tossed in and squashed in there. It works for little kids putting away plush toys. If the little kid trips and fall in the basket, nobody's crying. And, and it's an open, uh, it's a big open hole that they can aim for little, and little hands that can't quite, they don't have target yet. They don't have good aim. <laughs> they can still get it in there. And it works for adults that are gathering up throw blankets and throw pillows that you wanna have some extra in the living room. And so when you wanna clear up, you wanna pull those back out of the way and throwing them into a basket like this makes it um, less visually chaotic, right? In the living room. And your source for this one was amazon.com, if I'm not yes. mistaken. Yes, yes. We'll, ha we'll have a link for it in the show notes. Okay. And then the last one we're gonna talk about today is wire mesh magazine holders. So sure they work for magazines, but I like to use them for other stuff instead. I don't want you to keep all those magazines, so I'm not advocating you buy magazine holders for all your magazines. <laughs> you get to have them. you get to have one with magazines in it, right? <laughs> right. One. <laughs> one, one or two, maybe. And then you're done. Um, but they hold other products. So I like to use them for um, products under the bathroom or kitchen sinks where the space is narrow and blocked with all the piping, right? So usually there's some really narrow slots where you can put things to the sides of the piping and uh, these will work for that. And they hold paper sized office supplies like dividers and sleep protectors and packs of paper. And it's perfect to hold those, especially when the packages of those sleep protectors, for instance, are already open. If you get a large enough size, they can hold paper file folders um, a standard one, a standard magazine size, it, a file folder with a little tab on the end, it'll get caught. It won't quite fit in there, but you can buy some that are a little bit uh, deeper and then a file folder will actually fit. They sit upright like you see it sitting here, but they can also be put on their back on a bookshelf. So the, the shelf height between shelves on a bookshelf doesn't stop them from being used because if they don't fit straight in, you can rotate them and lay them on their back and then they're just a, a longer, shorter version of the same thing. They can be both holders of stuff and dividers of stuff at the same time on a shelf. They even can act as bookends on an open shelf. So they're seen as only for magazines, but I use, use them for anything that fits in them. Uh, in the crafty environment, I put a uh, loose uh, bead written instructions in there. If you end up with a bunch of loose paper, then in, if you don't want to be bindering all that kind of stuff, if you don't want to go through the process of putting them in sleep protectors and whatever, then you can stand up a bunch of loose pieces of paper in one of those things. And it's a great way to keep them and not have to put a bunch of effort into organizing them. And you'll have to pull it out. You'll have to pull out the contents and flip through looking for what you want but it's a good way to corral and keep those papers from floating all over everywhere. And that is the end of my list today. Uh, Connie mentioned they're great for cutting boards, the, the smaller cutting yes, boards. Yes, yes. And so then the, the cutting boards go in there and then that goes in onto a shelf and inside the kitchen, right? You can lay it, uh, stand it up tall or lay it down either way in the kitchen with those cutting boards in there. Yeah. And then it keeps them. So I would put them against the edge of a cabinet so that, there's a little bit more stability and as you pull something in and out. Um, but what a great idea. That's perfect. And gets all those cutting boards off the counter and out of the back of the sink where everybody puts them. <laughs> well, I um, found it, thought of a couple of things to add to the list myself. Um, okay. We are wrestling with the challenges of a smaller space. 
And someone in the chat, I think it was Joyce, mentioned having trouble with uh, over-the-door hangers. We, we have that same problem. Fortunately, my brother-in-law is extremely handy and is going to trim a couple of our doors so that over-the-door hangers work better. But um, we're finding this kind of thing very useful. Right. We have um, pretty small closets. And so putting one of these hanging inside or outside the closet door adds a whole lot of storage. We have one hanging on the bathroom door, another one on the closet door. Just a really, really nice way to make a little more room where the, okay. the rod is a little too packed. Yes. Go back to the other slide for a minute. Yeah. So see at the top, the part that goes up and over the door, you want whatever product that you buy, you want to make sure that that plate on the top that is going to go over the door is super, super thin. Yeah. So sometimes they're not very thin and that's where you get in trouble. If the door is very securely fit, you, you try to put a product up there and then the door won't close because that plate is too thin. I mean, too thick. Our so problem, you want to look for thin ones. Our problem is it's an, it's an old house. It's a 1939 house. And so things have shifted and, and warped. Yeah. And so some of the doors close a little too tightly, Yeah. but we're just going to, just shave you can shave just a little bit off the top of a, of a wooden door without a work. ton of effort and make that work the other thing is that um so it's a little too you know it's two right angle turns to go up and over the edge of the door and sometimes the bracket that goes over the door is actually wider than the door itself and so what that means is that it flips down and it doesn't always lay flat on the door and so one of the things that you can do to fix that is imagine um, um, a pool needle material that is spongy, some kind of foam or something like that. You can wedge a little piece of foam up under the top. I'm trying to point like you can see it. <laughs> right. We use <laughs> and yeah. to keep it to keep it sitting up correctly here. on the top of the I door. Can right. Can you see my cursor? No. Okay. I can't. Somebody else can. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can okay. see now. Yeah. We, we use a little bit of um, like a foam drawer liner, drawer and shelf liner, the spongy foam with lots of little holes in it. I don't have a picture, but you yeah, know what I'm talking I mean, about. You even, can buy it. Even a sponge might work. You, you yeah. just want something, um, a packing material, something like that. You can just cut a little cube of something to, uh, to stick underneath there as a little brace to just keep the door part flat. And so it'll um, also keep it from sliding from side to side to have a little bit of shelf, little bit. shelf liner. Agatha said shelf liner. I, yeah. Yeah. Is that, and a couple of lengths, I mean, a couple of thicknesses of that, if you need it to fit more tightly, more snugly. Yeah. Will help. And then the second thing is the, the, the spice stack. I there are a lot thing. of, this one is from, this is, I think, U Ucopia mm -hmm. is, I think, the original provider. There are a million knockoffs of this out there. Yeah. And um, we bought one of these on your recommendation. God, had, back when you lived with David. Yeah, two of them uh, that I've, two of them, one of them, a shelf eventually the, the thing that holds it in broke and i've never After replaced a decade it of using it yeah yeah i haven't <laughs> replaced right. it so but i have a turntable that holds the holds the ones that don't fit but these these are fantastic and this model this small model fits in a lot of different cabinets because they're like 10 inches high and they're designed to fit in the standard i think it's know. even less than that i think it's about yeah l less than 10 inches high and and um can fit inside a cabinet or yeah, just in a like, fairly small space and then the drawers the doors drawers tip out conveniently so you can place it fairly high up and still find it useful still pull a, yeah pull the shelf out and it drops down and then you slide it back in and it, and closes it really up. it works in all the little you know the little cabinets in and around above the stove that are already pretty small you can often get a, one small enough that it will fit in one of those slots. So it's, they're very useful. This one is awesome. Yeah. This one is this five one holds, jars wide. Yeah. And two, and, and two deep. So it, it's actually holding 30 full size ones or 60 of the teeny tiny ones. 
and not taking up a huge amount of space like that yeah. can sit inside a kitchen cabinet you can open a cabinet drawer you can pull down those those pull out a shelf and let it drop get what you need and put it back and it's all out of your way and it's really great if you have the cabinet space to put the larger one in um totally worth it because <laughs> it works really well and I haven't ever labeled mine, but I really do need to find some labels and label mine because now my brother-in-law is cooking at my house and he needs to know Ooh, where everything is. And he so, does, because you don't want to get between Richard and uh, finishing the, <laughs> Ooh, Mr. Rich needs to make some food over there. So we want to support him in that effort. <laughs> we have been talking about products. And so now... Let's uh, be before we get to the tittle. Oh, okay, go ahead. Let's let's get let's do a couple of our uh, quick announcements. Um, okay. <clears throat> I want to remind those who are watching or listening live that our YouTube channel has more than 150 videos on lots and lots of organizing topics. <clears throat> Visit cfhou.com/slash/youtube, and while you're there, you can subscribe to the channel and then click the bell icon next to the subscribe button if you want to get notifications when we post something new. We will meet again next Tuesday, May 11th at noon U.S. Central Time, live in Zoom and streaming on, on Facebook. And we're going to, uh, our topic next week was suggested by a frequent participant, Rowan, who is with us again today, who has shared a ton of great ideas for us to talk about. The question Rowan asked is, does does each one of us really have to have a couch, a set of fine silver, six kinds of hand lotion, or a formal dining room? So we're going to explore assumptions and expectations about the must-haves in our homes. I think that's going to be a really interesting topic. It's going to be a really interesting topic. And thanks again, Rowan, for uh, being a uh, contributing writer to the clutter free weekly seriously we're gonna have to start crediting her in the videos i, think. <laughs> I know right because she comes up with some really great ideas and we really uh, got excited about this one so we're gonna have a, a, a our, that as a topic next week we can't wait okay let's talk about the tittle so we've been talking about products so we decided that the tittle this week can be about using products that you already have in the house so let's look through the house for an organizing product that you've already bought but you haven't used anywhere yet. Think about the original purpose you had in mind. Will the product still work for this purpose or did you just buy it because it was cool? If it'll work as intended, then deploy it. If it was just a cool thing that caught your attention, then look at it with a critical eye. What problem can it solve or what can it, improvement can it make in a space? Let's use it there. If you don't have a use for it, then put it in your area for gifting, donating or recycling. And then if you don't have a spare organizing object laying around unused, then good for you. <laughs> Instead, then take some inventory of a few hot spots where the organizing products we've covered today might help you solve a problem and try one out. Could your pantry or kitchen drawers use some help? What about your closet or bedroom doors, the bookcases or the bookshelves? See if any of our ideas might help you make better use of a problem space that you have right now. And we report back. We'd always love to hear how it's going. Okay. If you are watching this on YouTube, we would love for you to join us live to get notifications about upcoming events. We invite you to join the meetup group by visiting cfhou.com slash meetup. <clears throat> As I've mentioned before, one of the perks of participating live in Zoom is you can stick around afterwards for the unedited uncensored version <laughs> you can also follow us on facebook by visiting cfhou.com slash facebook or subscribe to our mailing list by visiting cfhou.com slash subscribe we love to hear from you so please keep those questions comments and if you're rowan great topic suggestions <laughs> coming in the youtube comments on facebook or anywhere that you you find us and you can always reach us through the website at clutterfairhouston.com thanks everybody for joining us we had a great time today i hope you saw some products that let a little light bulb go off in your head and hopefully you can go and find one and 
and solve a problem in your house. That's our goal. And so we will wait to hear how it went for you. Can't wait. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.